If you are an American citizen living in Japan, there are a whole bunch of things you need to be aware of, and it seems like no one's actually telling you about them. Let's talk about it. Now, I need to do a disclaimer here because I am not in any way qualified to talk about this. I'm not any kind of financial professional. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not even American. But I've had a lot of people ask me about this stuff and I've met a lot of Americans who don't seem to be aware of it. So just as a kind of public service, I made this video just to tell you a few things that I've learned and that I hope will be useful to you if you're American living in Japan. So the first thing you need to be aware of is that as an American citizen living abroad, you need to file a tax return with the IRS every year. Even if you don't owe taxes, you still need to file. As well as that, you also have to file a declaration about any bank accounts you might have. This is called the FBAR. This one has some pretty serious penalties attached. It's definitely not worth messing around with. Now, one really important reason to file is that as an American living abroad, you actually have something called the Foreign Earned Income Exclusion, which means that you can apply to not pay taxes on your income earned abroad up to a certain amount every year, but you only get that exclusion if you apply for it. If you don't submit a tax return, you don't get the exclusion. So in the event that the IRS follows up and investigates you and decides to crack down on you, you would have to pay taxes on your foreign income, even though you wouldn't have had to if you'd filed. The next thing you need to understand is PFICs. A PFIC is a passive foreign investment company. Uh, and what it means is that basically any kind of fund that is not based in the US is a PFIC. So in Japan, that would be mutual funds or ETFs and even some companies, if they're the kind of company that owns lots of other companies within them. The reason you want to avoid PFICs is because the IRS doesn't like them. And because they don't like them, they have a special form that you have to fill in if you own one. Apparently it takes trained professionals about 20 hours to fill in this form. So you really don't want to be doing it as an amateur. Also, PFICs have a punitive tax rate of around 50%, I believe. Basically not worth bothering with. So who else is affected by this? Well, of course, US citizens are affected, but also if you file jointly with your spouse, so you submit a tax return and you file jointly with your spouse, they are also affected by these rules. So most of the time, it's not worth filing jointly if your spouse is not American because you're going to restrict what they can do here in Japan with their money. Also, any green card holders are also affected by these rules. And of course, your children, if they happen to be American citizens, are also affected by these rules. So let's talk about Japanese tax exempt accounts. Japan's a great place to invest in many ways. So there's lots of options for people, but Americans can't use most of those options. One thing that I believe is okay is a company DC pension. That's where your company enrolls you in a defined contribution retirement account. You put money in, your company may or may not put money in. That is administered by a, a company on your behalf. Uh, and that seems to be okay uh, in terms of the PFIC reporting requirements, but please do check before investing in a company DC. Ideco is Japan's retirement investment account and Americans should not use Ideco. You will be able to sign up for an account, you'll be able to start using your account, but you're gonna run into that PFIC reporting requirement if you do so. There is one thing that you might be able to do with Ideco and that is you can open an Ideco account and pay in uh, and get all the tax benefits, but, and, and then if you keep your money in cash, it won't be a PFIC, you won't have the reporting requirements. Now, of course, the younger you are, the less this makes sense, because if you put your money in cash, inflation is going to destroy it over the long term. But if you're close to retirement and you have a high income, you're paying a lot of income taxes, maybe it will be worth looking at Ideco. But you'd have to do the numbers and, and consider whether the hassle is worth it. NISA is Japan's tax exempt investment account. And again, anyone living in Japan can open a NISA account. It's a great option, but Americans should be careful not to use it to invest in PFICs. 
Uh, and what that means in practice is that Americans won't be able to buy Japanese ETFs or Japanese mutual funds or even some Japanese companies. So you'll only be able to invest in Japanese individual companies in NISA. And what that means is that you won't be able to use Tsumidate NISA at the moment. You'll be able to use the regular NISA. And from next year with the new NISA, you'll only be able to use the growth portion of the NISA account, which is up to 2.4 million yen a year. Now, unfortunately, even if you do use the NISA to invest in Japanese companies, the IRS is not going to recognize that as a tax exempt account. So you have to pay American taxes on your gains in NISA, even though in Japan, you wouldn't have to pay taxes on it at all. So for many people, it might not be worth investing in NISA either. Now you might think, well, why not just buy US stocks and ETFs? That should be okay. And yes, it would be. Unfortunately, because of the IRS's rules and reporting requirements and the red tape they impose on companies, most Japanese brokers will not sell US stocks or US ETFs to American citizens. They'll sell them to everyone else. <laughs> but not to US citizens. So that's not an option for most people. If you're finding the video useful and you'd like to get more content like this about money, about personal finance, about life in Japan, please do subscribe to the channel. It really helps us and lets us continue making these videos. So what can US citizens do in Japan? Well, there's not much really. So you could use NISA, could use a taxable account, a normal account in Japan, but generally it's gonna be better and easier just to use US brokers instead. If you already have a US broker account, maybe you had one before and you've still got it, you can continue using that. You'd have to send money back uh, uh, and invest that way, but that would be okay. Another option, if you don't already have an account, maybe you could open one. However, if you go to most brokers' websites and you try to sign up online using their standard forms and so on, it's not gonna work, you're gonna run into a problem where you're overseas and, and the form doesn't work for you. Now what some people are saying on the Retired Japan forum is that sometimes by calling up the brokers directly you can actually bypass that and open an account anyway. And so that might be a good option for some people. Now the easiest option is probably to open an account with Interactive Brokers Japan. This is a US broker but it's the Japanese branch so you kind of get the best of both worlds. You can buy US stocks and ETFs but it's a broker in Japan, so there's no real hassle to send them the money uh, and so on. Because they're an American company, the IRS paperwork is pretty smooth and also the Japanese paperwork will also be fairly smooth. The only problem is that, uh, as far as I'm aware, they're not offering NISA accounts yet, but they might do in the future and that would be a great option if they do. So how about you? Are you an American living in Japan? What are you doing with your money, with your investments? Did I miss anything? Did I get anything wrong? Please put any corrections or questions or comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.